Gotta give me some Pepsi, man. Huh? What the hell? Why can't I get through here? Damn it! Ah, my hand! <sighs> well, I got nothing better to do, so let's go. This is a Ghost Rider for the PlayStation 2. Dudes, babes, and metalheads, I am Scully. So seeing as I'm locked up in here, I decided to take a look at a game that I consider to be very underappreciated, so let's take a look at Ghost Rider for the PS2. Ghost Rider in this case started out as a semi-pre-sequel boot remake of the Ghost Rider mythos after that bogus Nick Cage movie from the same year, being developed by Climax Studios. Climax Studios? Dude, they sound familiar to me somehow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were the guys that... Ha 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 ha! Climax Studios, you shall obey me in ruining Silent Hill! Ha! 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 Great Cliff Burton's ghosts were in trouble. Aside from that, there really isn't that much development history on this game, but then again, it is a movie tying game, so my hopes really aren't all that high. But you never know, maybe this game could have something to offer. So, let's make like Jason Voorhees and go to hell in Ghost Rider. So jumping right into the story, it kicks off with Johnny Blaze being sent to hell by Mephisto, who then asks for his help in stopping Blackheart's resurrection because he has a pact with God about not allowing Demas to go balls off the walls insane on Earth, otherwise he will lose his power over hell. You know, I would question why the hell God would be shady enough to make some questionable deals with the devil, but the entire basic plot makes Mephisto out to be some sort of compulsive gambler who needs Ghost Rider to pay off his debts, otherwise the angels are gonna break his legs. To ensure that Johnny agrees to help Mephisto, he sends off vengeance to kidnap Roxanne as a bit of insurance. An underwhelming boss fight takes place, and then it's up to Johnny to save the Earth and make sure that Mephisto isn't sucking tomorrow's lunch through a straw. As the game progresses, you'll eventually meet up with Blade, who's there for some reason. And in terms of story, there's next to nothing outside of a glorified cameo, but gameplay-wise, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. The plot for most of the game revolves around you travelling to familiar locations from the series, as well as battling recognisable foes from the comics and stopping them from gathering Blackheart's corpse. But aside from all that, the plot is mostly just kicking back with a Pepsi up until the final boss fight. So as it turns out, this was all Mephisto's plan all along, and he was just using the Hellfire that Johnny's Hell Cycle was leaving behind to create a geoglyph to open up a portal between Hell and Earth. So you mean that the devil is manipulative and evil? Dude, no way! Next thing you know, you're gonna be telling me that Clark Kent is Superman. So thanks to the portal, Blackheart returns, now thankfully looking more like his comic appearance rather than the goth whinge bag we got in the movie. And to be honest, he's taken down just as quickly as he was reintroduced into the plot. It's a total bummer, really, because I think Blackheart's design in this game totally rocks. So Mephisto says he'll get you next time, Johnny saves the Earth and decides to chill the rest of the day to have sexy times with Roxanne. Story-wise, the overall game isn't much to talk about, but the narrative itself is really more of an excuse to go from level to level, so with that said, let's take a look at the gameplay. 
Right off the bat, the first thing you'd notice when taking control of Johnny is that the game controls like a hybrid of Devil May Cry and God of War. But I've said this a million times in the past, having an original gameplay style might be one thing, but making something fun out of it is a completely different issue. Seeing as Ghost Rider is a beat em up style game, you'll spend most of the game mixing and mashing buttons to create some wicked combos. Sweet, huh? But there's just one drawback to all this. You have to buy said wicked combo moves in order to pull them off. You can purchase upgrades by collecting souls, which can be earned by killing enemies, smashing breakable objects, and completing levels. Ordinarily, being forced to collect souls to gain combat moves would be tedious, but you earn souls so damn quickly that it doesn't even seem like a problem. But if there's anything that defines a good beat-em-up, it'll be the moves themselves and whether or not they feel satisfying to pull off. Thankfully in Ghost Rider's case, they are. The combo moves you can pull off look way hardcore, man, especially the finisher moves. Dude, now that's what I call gnarly, man. If that wasn't bad enough, you also have plenty of ways to take out your enemies by taking advantage of Johnny's Spirit Gauge and Link Charge. The Spirit Gauge is essentially just a scream nuke, while the Link Charge is just a DEATH TO ALL WHO OPPOSE ME mode where your attacks are stronger, faster, and you have the choice of using Ghost Rider's trademark Penisair to get some sweet, sweet vengeance on a demon who's really pissing you off. Yeah, fry sucker! Feel my vengeance! While 75% of the game is spent fighting, Ghost Rider also has another gameplay style. Driving sections. <laughs> Dude, it's like never a 2000s game without having a totally gnarly driving section in your action game. You can move the health cycle by pressing R1 and then reversing with L1. Pressing the circle button will fire off projectiles and pressing square and triangle can swing the Johnny's chain left and right. Holding down L2 will allow you to pull off a bodacious slide move to duck from incoming obstacles. Controlling the health cycle feels a tad wonky in places, but it's still pretty cool to use whenever these sections come up, if only as a breather from all the combat you've been doing. The last gameplay style left to talk about is one that's logged until you've beaten the game where you can then play as Blade. Yeah, for someone whose story-wise was really only there for the sake of being there, you can go through the game as Blade on your second playthrough. But dude, this is like way more than a simple skin swap, as Blade actually has his own unique spin on how the game plays. Unlike Johnny, Wesley Snipes here doesn't have a shotgun or any of Ghost Rider's demon powers, but he can drain their health, thus replenishing his own when enemies are stunned, so I guess you can consider him the game's hard mode. But with the way that the cookie crumbles, with everything that's good about a game, there's usually something bad, so let's get the negatives out of the way. Now, this might be more of a personal gripe that I have with a lot of beat-em-up games in general, but this still annoys me all the same. I really hate it when a game limits my progression, and yeah, I'm well aware of the fact that it's a common trend in these sort of games, but it's just so annoying when I'm just going about my day and then suddenly an invisible wall pops up and now you have to kill X amount of enemies before continuing. Sonic Unleashed, I'm looking your way, man. To some of the overall gameplay experience, it ranges from decent to addictively fun, especially when you're in the zone kicking some demon ass. Admittedly though, there are times when the game gets fairly dull, but that's probably a sign that you've been playing for way too long. As for the game's presentation, Ghost Rider looks damn good both graphically and artistically. Graphics, despite being nearly 10 years old by this point, still look presentable, and the grungy hellish art style gives me some real Shadow the Hedgehog vibes. But one element that I feel is overlooked the most about this game is its soundtrack. While not exactly memorable by any means, the hard rock instrumentals definitely get you in the mood to kick some ass, with a special shout out going to Blackout's boss theme. However, one gripe that I do have with the game's presentation is the cutscenes. Because I guess the budget ran out at Climax Studios, I guess they figured they'd go for a bit more of a comic book art style for the game's cutscenes, which to me comes off as laziness, as the in-game models look decent enough, and the PS2 was well capable of mouth movement, so what gives, man? Seriously, man, you might as well build up PowerPoint for all it's worth. Aside from the cutscenes, the game's presentation has stood the test of time so far, which is pretty damn commendable in my eyes. Final thoughts? This game's pretty decent, dude. Despite the overt positivity I gave this game, I'm not gonna lie to your face and say that it's the greatest game ever made, but for what it's worth, Ghost Rider is a solid action game. I'd say it's best played on a Friday night when you just want to chill out and rock out to some metal music. So to any action fans out there looking for a game to play, I'd say give Ghost Rider a rest. It's a lot of fun to play, the music rocks, and I'd say the combos still look as radical as ever. Haha, <laughs> cool, the door's open. Well, I'm gonna go grab me some sweet, sweet Pepsi.
Oh yeah, now this is happening. <sighs> Great Cliff Burton's ghost. Damn it. Keep it new metal, and I'm just gonna sit here and cry for.